So as I'm working through this evening, I'm bringing to us the ultimate connection with God by Rabbi Yosef Chaim Mimran. Well, as I said before, that I learned with Rabbi Mimran for a few years, maybe four years. And uh, it's quite a person, really, uh, to bring us to the place he brought us. Now, we're going to be in a place here called the Light of Consciousness. He calls it part number six. I just want to do uh, the last part that we learned yesterday. He says, all cravings of the mind are the mind's way of seeking salvation or fulfillment. But if it's in internal things and are in the future. So it says, all cravings are the mind's way of seeking salvation or fulfillment in external things. That's what a craving is. That, that thing that you have to have it and or in the future because it'll make you money then, it'll bring you the people that you want, it'll be da 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 da. Okay. That's crazy. Now he comes over here and he had this piece, it's called Peace, it's called The Light of Consciousness. He says like this. Uh, we're going to quote the Abarbanel again. And he quotes like this, and it says, I am your God. The true reward is the attachment to me and to bask in the rays of my presence. So it says, how can we escape the devastating clutches of the emotional ego? It shows up everywhere, and it seems to be overwhelmingly powerful. The good news is that if we respond to it appropriately, the emotional ego is not powerful at all, as it has no power of its own. It can be like likened to a dark shadow cast by the ego, a shadow that will disappear as soon as a light is shined on. Indeed, it fears the light of your consciousness. It is afraid of being found out. The emotional ego can survive only so long as you con unconsciously identify with it by thoughts or me. And only if you harbor an, an unconscious fear of facing the pain that lives within you. Therefore, if you don't confront your own pain, if you don't bring the light of your consciousness into it, you will be forced to relive that pain over and over again. The emotional ego may masquerade as a dangerous monster so that you will do nothing, you'll do anything to avoid looking at it. But in truth, it is nothing more than an insubstantial phantom, a shadow that can never prevail against the power of the presence of your own soul. Now here's a place where we see that he'd said, he had said previously in a previous chapter about how can we feel our soul. He used the word neshama, the neshama that's within, in us. And he seems to be saying that this phrase here, how can it, how can the Yetzir Hara or the ego, the emotional ego, prevail against the power of the presence of your own soul? So if you watch your thoughts, the watcher, he says, he's implying, is the source or the opening to your neshama. Trying to ignore our pain and telling ourselves the pain is for just an illusion will in no way free, free us from the pain. What can free us is our effort to recognize the truth and bring that truth into our own experience. This is why the emotional ego doesn't want us to observe it directly and see it for what it is. He doesn't want us to watch our thought patterns. As soon as we observe it, feel its energy within us, and bring our attention to it, all that moment we at that moment we break our identification with it and we allow a higher dimension of consciousness to enter our lives. Listen to these words. This is his words. Once you become the observer and the witness of the emotional ego, 
because now there's the old version will leave us like a third party. It's not you. It can no longer you. It can no longer use you by pretending to be you. Most importantly, it can no longer replenish itself by feeding on the negativity within you. Now, if you read the Zohar in other places, the mistakes that we made, the barriers that we get involved with, and the the uh, the misuse of our lives has a lot to do with making it possible for that for for the emotional ego to to really suck off of those places. It is then that you find your own inner strength, because if you can overcome that, though, then you can find your own inner strength. You have accessed the power of soul. You have accessed the power of soul. So he's saying this concept, find the neshama within you, this is what he's talking about. Because that proud, that that power within us to be able to observe our thoughts. What can free us is our effort to recognize the truth and bring that truth into our own experience. This is Paul Fleischman. This has been the ultimate connection with God, seven step guide to Jewish spirituality, Rabbi Yosef Chaim Nimrod.